Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with Howard University's WHUT. Today we are chatting with Carol Jenkins, CEO, and Lynn McGuire, Board Chair of World Learning. Carol and Lynn have generously agreed to share some of their experience with us. I'd like to thank you both for joining us today. We're thank glad you. to be here. So in this day and age, where America is sometimes perceived as withdrawing from the world, you have an organization that is all about engagement with mm -hmm. the world. Talk about the mission of world learning. Carol, if you could start, uh, and, and just describe your history and what you've done. Sure, well, thank you. Yes, World Learning is an organization. We've been around for 85 years, and we're a nonprofit. And our mission is to work with institutions and individuals to create a more peaceful and just world. And we do that in a number of different ways, but primarily it's through education, exchange, and international development. And I'd like to focus just to start us on with exchange programs, because the work that we do with exchange programs is we send Americans overseas and we bring people from other countries to America. And oftentimes in both of those venues, they are mixing together. They're mixing with people from other countries, not just from the country where they've come from. And they're learning by, as our founder used to say, people learn to live together by living together. Our programs are experiential and they are rooted in the culture and the experiences of of where people have come from so that we can get to know each other better. And so we're an organization that reaches out. And that's how we started. And, and it, it really engages people from all over the United States. On the board level, there are, there are members from all over the United States and different sensibilities. And, and you're talking about infecting the minds and um, attitudes of Americans and of people from outside this country through exposure to each other, aren't you? That's exactly right. Again, it's that learn to live together by living together philosophy. And, and at World Learning, that's very deep and very meaningful. Um, we, you know, we, we are known for our experiential kinds of programs. We are known for authenticity, for having genuine experiences. Um, and it all stems from that root philosophy about really understanding other people. And you can't do that unless you're face to face um, and you know, authentically trying to learn from them. So how do we bring people together to do that? We can do that here in the US and we can do it globally and we do both. Now so often that kind of exposure because of the logistics required to actually travel to another place and find a place to live and so on is restricted to people of means. Mm -hmm. How do you function? We are an organization that provides resources to individuals who might otherwise not be able to afford these kinds of experiences. So we scholarship um, about $2 million a year for individuals who meet that criteria. We thankfully have very generous donors, some of whom have been part of our programs. They've actually gone on our programs over these 85 years, their children, their grandchildren. And so they're able to support others who through the scholarships or other, or other mechanisms to provide this opportunity. And then they also provide full pay tuition. So we intentionally reach out across the country when we're, when we're looking for individuals to go in these programs and when they're coming to us to find ways in which to ensure that everyone has the chance to engage in this kind of program. We have some wonderful new partnerships. We're working with UBS right now and um, it, we offer, what is it, 200? 200 young mm -hmm. men of color from New York City, and I think we're adding other cities as well, um, to study abroad during the summer before they go to college. Um, so it's a way of, and most of these kids have not been out of their home cities, never mind the US, and then you get to send them abroad. So all of those students are fully underwritten thanks to this partnership that we have. Mm -hmm. But that's the kind of thing we really like doing. And this is uh, one of the one of the key issues that that we face today. There's been a lot of news coverage about uh, this American administration's um, attitudes toward uh, different countries and different racial profiles um, of those different countries. Talk about how you address those issues and ensure that you are exposing Americans and people from other countries to America 
but based on different criteria that 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 is thinking about um, uh, citizens from different areas of the world that might have different cultures, different religions, different complexions. Mm -hmm. that, that's, a, that's a great question and one that we grapple with because we are dealing with people from so many backgrounds. And you need to be very sensitive to what their issues are and what their needs are, their religious backgrounds, et cetera. And so... And their cultural norms. And their yeah. cultural norms. The, the, but that's also part of what our organization does with the methodologies that we have, with the master's programs that we run and our other programs where we actually teach individuals at the college level, so the undergraduate level, as, as well as the master's level, in how to work in different cultures to bring about peace and reconciliation. So we actually do that in the other part of the organization that is part of world learning. Um, and so with that, we're able to support individuals with special needs, with special requirements, and make sure that they have a fulfilling experience both here and when they go overseas. I had the opportunity to meet with some of our Iraqi young people and um, undergraduate students who we bring to the U.S. for experiences. They go across the country, they live with host families, they meet with different universities and colleges, they meet with NGOs, etc. across the country. Um, and they were they came back to DC for sort of a final event where they could they could come together as a group, several hundred, and just reunite and experience just what it was like with each other, reflect upon what they had learned and, and gone through. And during that time, they were also able to meet with some of their own government officials who were based in Washington, D.C. So you've got Iraqi youth meeting with their own officials who work for the government. And I watched several of the students ask very pointed, very specific questions that were polite, that were diplomatic, but that were very, very um, aimed at addressing some of the concerns that they have for what's going on in their own country. And they weren't afraid to air those issues, nor was, nor was their own government working here afraid to hear from them. And it was a wonderful exchange of dialogue where they learned how to ask hard questions in respectful ways toward a particular objective that could bring about positive change. Now, in terms of the, the uh, staff competencies and the volunteer competencies that you have, that is quite a, a wide range of different competencies that you're describing. You're mm -hmm. talking about um, culturally sensitive facilitation. Mm -hmm. You're talking about uh, how do you, um, you guide young people through their experiences. We have, of course, you're managing an operating institution, mm -hmm. so you have mm -hmm. financial management, you know, workflow, all that. Uh, you raise money. Talk about the structure of the organization that allows you to deliver these services, and also if you could talk about the scale of the services that you uh, that you deliver in how many countries, uh, the budget, and so on. That would also be very illuminative. Yeah, we we have evolved into being a somewhat complex organization, I would say, in some ways, um, simple in others. The complexity is that. We have an NGO that does development and exchange work, and then we have an educational arm, um, which does um, undergraduate study abroad and graduate, you know, graduate degrees. Um, and and so we have the educational uh, campus up in Vermont, and we have the NGO headquartered in DC. Um, that said, there's a lot of back and forth between the two, and they and the um, the fundamental values um, across everything we do are the same. Um, but it does create some complexity because we need people that are um, have deep competencies in the NGO world and deep competency in the education mm -hmm. world, and those are not the same. Right. Um, so um, you know, but but that's no different than any large company, right? With multiple kinds of business lines. Um, but our business lines are very tightly related in that it is about creating a civil society. It is about um, you know, making the world a more just and peaceful place through education development and exchange no matter which arm you're looking at. And what is the total budget of the organization? It's about 150 million 
um, per year. Um, the uh, NGO piece is about 100 million, and the education piece is about 50. Kind of shakes out to that. We have how many employees? There's about 2,000 right. across the world. Right. And how are they distributed throughout the world? We work in about 150 countries. And in each country, there's a slightly different presence, slightly different composition of staff, because it depends on the type of program that we're running there. Um, we work in every region. And with our academic programs, what's really, what's really great about those is that because we have offices in so many different countries and registrations in those countries, we're able to provide different kinds of support depending upon what the environment, the context, the market requires. And again, this is very much part and parcel of who we are. These regional offices are staffed by people from those countries. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, if you look at other organizations with, with programs abroad, oftentimes we, you, we're sending uh, or the model is you send your Americans overseas to staff those offices. And in our case, um, it's almost always the core staff is from that country. Mm -hmm. They know the country. They know the culture. Um, that's, again, part and parcel of who we are. It's authentically um, what, is, you know, what are the norms and the culture of this country and how do we convey that to our students and our exchange people and anyone coming through. So mm -hmm. what's next for world learning? We are launching a really exciting new master's degree program, a global scholars program. And what this is going to enable is to have people take their master's program, again, in an experiential way outside of the US, outside of the traditional classroom setting. So it's a climate change program. They're going to be in Iceland, and then they're going to go to Tanzania. And we're really excited about the comparative program that that will provide them in two very, very distinct different settings. And that's just one example of what's out there for world learning going forward. Uh, I would also say that with our experiment in International Living Program, which is the high school exchange program, we're launching some ideas around domestic exchange. There is as much to be learned mm -hmm. about how to get along and, and work together and live together in America to have a cross-cultural exchange in the US that, as there is when you do it internationally. So that's something that we're really excited about looking at. Yeah, and, and these programs that Carol is talking about, really um, what we're trying to do is leverage these regional overseas kind of centers that we have um, and using them across multiple platforms. So. Um, so we have in-country experts, and so we can bring students there to earn their master's degrees, or we can bring exchange students in, or we can use that as a base to send exchange people to the U.S. So really trying to leverage those um, global strengths that we have across mm -hmm. all of our different services. So important, so important that we learn to live together, that we learn to respect each other, that we learn to communicate and speak truth, be authentic mm -hmm. with each other and live together in, a, as neighbors because, in effect, we are in this interconnected world so close to each other. Lou McGuire, Carol Jenkins, thank you so much for sharing the work of world learning with us to bring this world together. And thank you so much for your insights.